Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Daniel and welcome to my channel. I'm Sustainable Dan and this is where I teach beautiful people just like you how to do more things for and by themselves. In today's incredible video, I'm going to be teaching you lovely people how to make Welch's wine. It is a home brewing favorite, an absolute classic. I'm going to teach you how to take a bottle of Welch's grape juice and turn it into an absolutely delicious bottle of wine. If at any point you get value out of this video, I do ask that you hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want to learn more DIY stuff from yours truly, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for useful links, if you're looking for the recipe and the method, go down in the description below. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in and let's start making some homemade Welch's wine. So first things first in home brewing, you always want to sanitize all of your equipment. Now I do that using Star Sand Sanitizer. It's super easy to use. I fill up a one gallon jug with water, add the Star Sand, shake it up, and then I apply it to all the equipment that I'm going to be using. Then we can go ahead and start adding our ingredients to the carboy. I always add my dry ingredients first because then I get to wash the rest of it down the funnel with the grape juice and the water. So the next thing that I did was I added my four cups of sugar. If you want to add less sugar, feel free to use three cups, but for this recipe, I used four. The amount of sugar you use will determine one, your alcohol content and possibly your sweetness. So once I added my four cups of sugar, then I added all of my other dry additives. That is my half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme, my one teaspoon of yeast nutrient, and my two teaspoons of acid blend. Then once all of that was added, I added my four cups of juice. After my four cups of Welch's grape juice, I added water all the way up to the one gallon mark. I stopped incrementally and shook it up to make sure that all of the sugars were dissolved because we're soon going to be taking a specific gravity reading. Then once I added my water all the way up to the one gallon mark, I went ahead and took a specific gravity reading and this specific gravity ended up being around 1.120. After I got my specific gravity measurement, I then added my quarter teaspoon of Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast. I simply added my yeast directly to the must. It works great for me. Then once I have my wine yeast added, I of course throw on my airlock and then I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of weeks. I let my Welch's wine ferment for a few weeks until the fermentation started dying down. Then I racked it over so that I could transfer all the good wine from one carboy to the next while leaving behind the dead yeast and other things that have fallen to the bottom. Whenever I did that, I took another specific gravity reading, which was at 1.024. So that means that a lot of the fermentation had already occurred and we we're almost done fermenting. Now, one thing that I like to do with my wines that I did here is once I racked it over, I usually end up with more headspace. And what I did, since I have plenty of Welch's grape juice on hand, is I filled it up to the top with Welch's grape juice. This could technically be considered back sweetening and so then I filled it the rest of the way up with Welch's grape juice and let it continue fermenting. After about a month had gone by I then took another specific gravity reading and I noticed that the specific gravity was around 1.030 and then after another month went by because I honestly thought that the yeast was done. I even added a little bit more yeast to see if it would keep going but this yeast generally caps out at about 12%. So I was pretty sure that I added enough sugar that fermentation had stopped with residual sugar, which I'm completely fine with. And so I ended up with a final specific gravity, the specific gravity that we have here today of 1.022. I let it sit for about a total of four months from beginning whenever I put all the ingredients in the carboy all the way up until the date that I bottled it, which was today. And my final specific gravity reading was 1.022. This is a fairly sweet wine. This is what's considered a dessert wine. And I am very happy with this specific gravity reading and I have tasted it every step of the way, but I'm very excited to taste it today. Of course, once I was done fermenting and letting it sit inside the carboy, I then put them inside bottles. And as I said earlier, this is the one bottle that just didn't get filled up all the way. 
I ended up with a total of four wine bottles, almost five. And for simply adding a handful of ingredients into some watered down, sugary Welch's grape juice, I am pretty excited to see just how this turned out. So now that we got the ingredients, the procedure out of the way, let's go ahead and see how well this Welch's wine turned out. I am super excited about this because oftentimes it's the very simple recipes that really do turn out the best. Ooh. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> but I did have a lot of headspace in there. Interesting. Okay, this is our Welch's wine. Things that I'm looking for, I'm looking for color. I'm looking for clarity, how clear it is. I'm looking for effervescence. That's something that we're gonna feel on the tip of our tongue, maybe on our lips. And then I'm obviously looking for taste. That's gonna involve sweetness and then also mouthfeel, pretty much how viscous it is. So let's go ahead, smell this incredible Welch's wine and give it a taste. But as I can see already, it's not super see-through, not the clearest wine I've ever made in my whole life. But it's probably because I kind of unsettled a little bit prior to bottling. But that is fine by me. It does not look very bubbly. So let's go ahead and see if there's any effervescence. There is absolutely no effervescence, which means that this wine is completely flat. So, I used Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast. That really capped this fermentation out at about 12 to 14%. But I had a very high starting specific gravity, which means that we had about two points of sugar left in this wine after fermentation. What that means is that this is very sweet. Generally, whenever a wine is sweet, it brings out the original flavor that you experience from the original juice that you used. What I'm trying to say is this tastes like Welch's grape juice, but Welch's grape juice that is about 12% alcohol content. This is really good. So this has a really good mouthfeel. It's very similar to Welch's grape juice. What I would expect is that I would actually expect it to be a little bit thinner, but it seems to have a similar consistency it's not very tanniny, so like the taste that you get whenever you chew on grape skins pretty much, you know, like that kind of like sticky feeling that you feel whenever you have a really dry red wine. It's very juicy, it's very lush, very flavorful. So I am so glad that I already have another batch of this in the works because this is freaking incredible. This is one of those moments where I'm shocking and impressing myself because I didn't think it would turn out this well. Bad things that I've had in other wines that I was afraid of that I don't have in this one. A sharp alcohol flavor, almost like an obnoxious alcohol flavor. And I really do think it's because I was using Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast. I'm really just blaming it all on the wine yeast. And I think that the Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast fermented it low and slow. And then I also added more Welch's grape juice, so I kind of step sweetened it, allowed it to slowly ferment instead of doing it all at once. So at the end of the day, I went over everything you need to make Welch's wine. I told you where you can get equipment to make Welch's wine. I showed you how to make Welch's wine, and then I told you just how freaking amazing this Welch's wine. I wish that you could reach through the screen and taste this. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Welch's wine. I don't have anything else to say about it. There's a little bit of an issue with clarity, but everything else is fantastic about this wine. I would have no problem sharing this with my friends, and I'm fairly certain they would all enjoy it. This is a dessert wine. If you want a drier Welch's wine, three cups instead of four cups of sugar. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all so much for being here. And as I've said before, if you've gotten value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna see my face more often showing you how to do cool stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
if you're looking for useful links, if you want the equipment that I use to make wine, if you want the method or the recipe, go on in the description down below. And that is all that I have for you today. I hope that you all have an absolutely fantastical day. Happy brewing.